Excellencies, Madam Executive Secretary, distinguished delegates. It is a great pleasure and privilege for me to join you at this second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics for Asia and the Pacific. I am Rachel Bevan. I recently joined ESCAP on the 1st of November 2021 as the Director of Statistics Division. Since we're still living in the times of COVID-19, travel restrictions in many countries in Asia and the Pacific region and social distancing measures are still continued. To ensure the safety and well-being of all delegates, this conference is being organised virtually. Before we move on, I would like to take a few minutes to provide information about the conduct of the session and about the KUDO, the e-conferencing platform that we're using today. We also welcome participants joining us via YouTube. We had a test run last week and we hope that most of you were able to attend. We also sent to all delegates the user guide with instructions for using KUDO. To select the preferred UN language, the language selector with drop down menu is available on the lower left of your screen. When you want to make an intervention, kindly click the request to speak button. When the chair calls upon you to take the floor, the microphone and camera icons will turn red. Please click unmute the microphone and turn on the video and deliver your intervention. Do not click done speaking until you have completed your intervention as this will cancel your request. Once you've completed your intervention, kindly click done speaking. For technical issues related to KUDO, kindly click technical support tab under the messaging icon and type your message there. Our technician will assist you shortly. The Secretariat will be monitoring the messages in KUDO. However, the Secretariat kindly requests that all substantive questions or interventions be raised through your delegation by using the request to speak button only. And finally, to prevent echoes and interference, Please stay on the floor language when you speak and ensure all other devices connected to KUDO in the same room are turned off. Kindly note that remote simultaneous interpretation of the proceedings is provided by the United Nations in Chinese, English, French and Russian for the purpose of facilitating communication in light of the fact that there are six official languages of the United Nations, four of which are used at ESCAP. Participants are requested to be mindful of the additional difficulties experienced by interpreters when working in remote mode and of the increased likelihood of disruptions to the audio feed to the interpreters. Only the speech or intervention in the original language is authentic and constitutes an authentic record of the proceedings. In case of any inconsistency between the interpretation and the speech or intervention in the original language, the latter shall prevail. In addition, interpreters servicing remote meetings cannot be held liable for interruption of service, pixelation, freezing or loss of visual input, partial or complete loss of audio, audible artifacts, unauthorised access to personal or confidential data, leaking of information due to inadequate soundproofing and or data loss. Thank you for your attention on these matters. Distinguished delegates, to open the second Ministerial Conference on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics, please join me in welcoming Ms. Armida Salsia Ali Shavana, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of ESCAP. Ms. Kamni Naidu, Administrator General, Ministry of Justice, Fiji, and Chair of the Regional Steering Group for civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. Ms. Deborah Komini, Director of East Asia and Pacific Regional Office, UNICEF. Mr. Indrika Ratwati, Director of the Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific, UNHCR. May I now invite Ms. Armida Salsia Ali Shavana, Under Secretary General, 
of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of ESCAP to deliver her welcoming statement. Ibu Amida, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rachel. Ms. Kamni Naidu, Administrator General of the Ministry of Justice of Fiji and Chair of the Regional Steering Group for Civil Registration and Final Statistics, Ms. Deborah Komini, Director of the UNICEF East Asia and Pacific Regional Office, Mr. Indrika Rawate, Director of UNHCR, Regional Bureau for Asia and Pacific, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my pleasure to see large participation from governments in the senior official segment of the Second Minister Conference on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and Pacific. We are here to celebrate reaching the midpoint of the Asia and Pacific Civil Registration and Vital Statistics decade. In 2014, Asian and Pacific governments attended the first ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and Pacific and proclaimed the years 2015 to 2024 as the civil registration and vital statistics decade. The ministerial declaration underscored that by 2024, all people in Asia and Pacific will benefit from universal and responsive civil registration and vital statistics system facilitating the realization of their rights and supporting good governance, health, and development. Distinguished participants, we are organizing this conference as governments are charting their way out from the COVID-19 pandemic. Statistics clearly indicate that millions of people are back into extreme poverty, unemployment rates are rising, while countless families are mourning the loss of their loved ones. The COVID-19 pandemic has placed a renewed importance on the need for timely and reliable data on deaths and their causes and the critical role of CRVS systems in ensuring inclusive access to health care and social protection services in times of crisis. This uncertain time also provides governments to further commit to reaching the realization of their shared vision by also endorsing a regional action framework to accelerate their commitments. Time has now come. We must take this opportunity to focus on the efforts of governments and developed partners by setting their own goals and targets for the end of the decade. As we celebrate this important midpoint milestone, we will reflect not only on our accomplishments, but also on areas to redouble our collective efforts. Our work is not yet over. Distinguished participants, I'm pleased to recognize that member states and the statistical communities have worked tirelessly to achieve its goals of universal civil registration, the provision of legal documentation of civil registration to all, and the use of civil registration records for vital statistics. While the overall number of children under five whose birth was never re registered has significantly decreased, one in five remains without birth registration in 2021. Notable improvements in death registration have also been observed in the region, although progress still lags behind birth registration. Despite the progress made during the first part of the decade, many people in Asia and Pacific are still being left behind. We have worked ahead to achieve the regional shared vision of universal registration systems. I'm confident discussions and actions points set to follow this week will help lead us in the right direction. I look forward to your views and active engagement. ESCAP, along with all the conference organizers, so 13, all of us, so namely, aside from ESCAP, UN Women, Women Count, Vital Strategies, Child Rights Coalition Asia, World Vision, UNICEF, UNFPA, UNDP, UNHCR, WHO, and the World Bank. A special thanks and appreciate, appreciation to our colleagues, the conf, all the conference co-organizers. Without their effort, time, and dedication, this very important event would not have been possible. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you, Madam Executive Secretary. May I now invite Ms. Kamni Naidu, Administrative General, Ministry of Justice, Fiji, and Chair of the Regional Steering Group for Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and the Pacific to deliver her opening statement. Madam, you have the floor. Ms. Amida Alishibana, Executive Secretary of ESCAF, Ms. Deborah Komenai, Director of UNICEF East Asia and Pacific Regional Office, Mr. Indrika Ratwane, Director of UNHCR, Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific. Distinguished delegates, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the co-organizers of the conference who have made this conference possible. Like all of you, I look forward to the exchange of experiences and ideas to take place this week. Indeed, as we are embarking on the second half of the Asia and the Pacific civil registration and wider statistics um, decade, it is essential that we learn from each other to make sure we accelerate progress towards the three goals of the decade. Universal civil registration, the provision of legal documentation of civil registration for all and the use of civil registration records for vital statistics. Distinguished delegates, the conference represents an accomplishment for all members of the regional steering group for civil registration and vital statistics. We held our first discussion on this conference in, nine, in 2017 when the regional steering group recommended convening a ministerial conference on the midterm review for the Asia and the Pacific civil registration and vital statistics decade. A recommendation which was then endorsed by the Economical and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific at its 74th session. This was, of course, only the first step. We then supported the Secretariat in the development of the midterm questionnaire that many of you completed uh, to report on your collective progress. As we approached the conference, we discussed agenda items and background papers to ensure the relevance of the conference to all participants and to spearhead regional action towards our goals. Finally, we also collaborated with the Secretary to develop the first draft of the ministerial declaration to be adopted at the end of the conference. Distinguished delegates, my country Fiji has made significant improvements to its civil registration and vital statistics system. Since the beginning of the decade, we look forward to sharing our successes and our challenges with you. We also hope you will actively engage in the discussions to take place this week so that we can all uh, also learn from you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Kamni Naidu. As you know, the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics is organized by ESCAP, UNICEF, UNDP, UNHCR, UNFPA, UN Women, World Bank, WHO, Pacific Community, CDC Foundation, Vital Strategies, Plan International and World Vision. May I now invite Ms. Deborah Komini Director of East Asia and Pacific Regional Office, UNICEF, to deliver her opening statement on behalf of the co-organizers of the conference. Ibu Armida Salsia Alice Jabana, ESCAP Executive Director, Ms. Kamni Naidu, Administrator General, Ministry of Justice of Fiji and Chair of the Regional Steering Group, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be virtually with you today on behalf of UNICEF at the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. Seven years have passed since the first conference when the ambitious goal was set that by 2024, all people in the region will benefit from universal and responsive civil registration and vital statistics. This was an important recognition that universal birth registration and legal identity are critical elements in the development of all countries in the region, as later reflected also in the Sustainable Development Goals. Asia and the Pacific have made important progress since the start of the decade of action. The number of children under the age of five who have never 
been registered has decreased from 135 million to about 64 million. This is a significant achievement, but one out of four children in Asia and the Pacific does not yet have a birth certificate. We have to do better because every child has a right to be registered. And I will never get tired of reminding everybody that birth registration is not just a bureaucratic act. It is a foundation and proof of legal identity. Hence, it is the basis to establish a child's nationality, avoid the risk of statelessness, and seek protection from violence and exploitation. Because children who are uncounted for and without a birth certificate are left behind. They are denied full access to their rights. This is why civil registration and vital statistic systems are critical to enable all other rights of the child. Now, we know that the structures needed for these systems to be effective are often complex. They need technological, but also human capacity. And this means they also need sustained political commitment. Development partners, including UNICEF and other UN agencies, are determined to continuing to work together with governments, with institutions across the region, and also with the private sector and NGOs to build comprehensive, country-owned, sustainable civil registration systems, vital statistics systems, and identity management systems as part of the UN legal identity agenda. UNICEF is especially devoted to find practical, low-cost solutions to register all children from birth and remove all obstacles. There are encouraging examples from this region. In Kiribati, for example, UNICEF is supporting mobile teams to reach children with birth registration in the most remote islands. In Kyrgyzstan, lawyers were enabled to provide support to registration in the most isolated settlements. These initiatives pave the way for children to access other fundamental rights, the right to health, access to education, social protection, and much more. Asia and the Pacific is a very dynamic region, yet more than one in three unregistered children globally live in this region. They are the ones who have been left behind and are the hardest to reach, but they are also the ones most in need to be seen, counted for, identified, included. To reach the targets of the Decade of Action by 2025 and fulfill our vision of a region where every child has her right to a legal identity fulfilled, we need to work together. And as we collectively recover and build forward better from COVID-19, civil registration and vital statistics systems are more important than ever. After all, one of the many lessons learned during this pandemic is how dependent we are on population data to protect our health and overcome this kind of crisis. And this starts with ensuring that every child is counted and registered. I wish us all a fruitful conference and an outcome document that will ensure we collectively deliver on our ambitions by 2025. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kamini. Another co-organizer of the conference and important partner in the region is UNHCR. I would therefore like to invite Mr. Adrika Ratwati, Director of the Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific to deliver his opening statements. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to welcome on behalf of all the organizers of this ministerial conference on civil registry and vital status with Asia and Pacific. This conference is an important milestone for the region towards universal and responsive civil registration and vital statistics system. Ultimately, these systems will improve an individual's access to health, education, and livelihoods. They will enhance, accelerate, and bring us closer to the realization of 2030 sustainable development. 
since the start of India Pacific CRVS in 2015, the region has made progress on a global scale. Many of the improvements in the national CRVS systems can be attributed to the achievement of Asia and the Pacific. Against this backdrop, universal registration and the vast improved wide statistics systems seem now reach for the most countries in our region by the end of the CRVS decade, or at least 2030, date for the sustainable development agenda. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, let us use this conference not only as a moment of celebration of these achievements and acknowledgements that we have done, but also as an examination of the registration gaps that still need to be addressed collectively. While short in the national systems affect mainstream majority populations, it's always hard to reach and marginalize groups that feel the biggest impact. The national varies, of course, from country to country, but the people likely to suffer exclusion from CRPS systems are usually living in rural, remote, isolated, or remote areas, minority indigenous people, people on the move, asylum seekers, refugees, and persons <clears throat> state and have disputed legal identity. From the humanitarian perspective, I would like to emphasize a further aspect of inequality in civil registration. Throughout the world, we see elements of intersectionality at play when we look at the restricted access to CRPS systems. For example, while refugees face barriers, women and girls amongst them often face the greatest difficulty. While persons with disabilities face challenges in accessing CRPS systems, these challenges go tremendously for persons with disabilities who at the same time happen to be a seeker. And any status man or woman able to confirm that poverty is an additional challenge for timely and safe registration. Addressing CRPS barriers is a most prominent matter of gender justice and the complex strategy to fight all forms of discrimination. As a UNESCO for the Asia Pacific, I would like to seize this opportunity to recall the links between civil registration, legal identity, documentation, and the prevention of sickness. While birth certificates usually convey nationality, they may prove that entitlement to a specific nationality because they establish the child's parentage and the place of birth. To prevent status, birth registration, therefore, remains of utmost importance, as my colleague Minister has just clearly alluded to. The preparation Conference have again shown the added value of the lateral of society and groups. The strong partnership between ESCAP members and associate members, international partners, and civil society organizations has laid the foundation for advancing the region's shared CRPS vision. While progress in this area lies always primarily on national governments, let me also emphasize the critical role of civil society organizations. Given their expertise, it should not be underestimated how they have contributed and continue to contribute to developing great tools for achieving the goals of the CRBS. So we should all be grateful to our colleagues from civil society for the incredibly important work that they do on the region. I look forward the mutual sharing and learning that the conference makes possible. I'm confident that the discussed experiences will enable governments to facilitate and expect changes on the ground where they find this to be appropriate in the light of their national context, policies, and goals. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by reiterating the motto of both the Asia and the Pacific CFP decade, 
and the 2030 Agenda Sustainable Development. Together, let's make sure that everyone is in the picture and that no one is left behind. I thank you for Thank you, Mr. Radwati. Distinguished delegates, we will now proceed with agenda item 1B, election of officers. I would like to invite my colleague, Ms. Petra Namias, Chief of Population and Social Statistics Section, Statistics Division, ESCAP, to take the floor. Petra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rachel. Um, excellencies, Madam Executive Secretary, distinguished delegates. It is now my pleasure to conduct the election of officers for the senior official segment of the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. In line with its rules of procedure, the committee will elect from among, among its members a chair and two vice chairs of the session. However, if the plenary so decides, the rules may be applied differently today for the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics to accommodate the extraordinary circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic and elect a chair and five vice chairs of the session. May I, may I seek nomination for the chair and vice chairs of the conference? The floor is now open for comments. I recognize the distinguished delegate of China. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam. I have the pleasure in proposing the nomination of the chair and vice chairs for the senior officials segment of the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific as follows. As chair, Mr. Jeff Montgomery, Registrar General of Births, Deaths and Marriages, Department of Interna uh, Internal Affairs, New Zealand. As Vice Chairs, Mr. Saeed Rashidel Hossein, Economic Counselor and Autonomate, Autonomate Permanent Representative of Bangladesh to ESCAP. Mr. Shukmo Iwuno, Deputy Chief of the Mission and Deputy Permanent Representative of Indonesia to ESCAP. Ms. Surila Binti Maud Sidak, Deputy Chief of Mission, Minister and Permanent Representative of Malaysia to ESCAP. Mr. Jong Yong Jong, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Korea to ESCAP. And Mr. Oleg Shamlov, Minister Consular and Deputy Permanent Representative of the Russian Federation to ESCAP. I'm sure that the distinguished delegate I have proposed will discharge the duties efficiently for the successful deliberations of this conference. I thank you, Madam. Thank you, distinguished delegate of China. Would any delegations like to propose alternative nominations or second the nomination made by the distinguished delegate of China? I recognize the distinguished delegate of Maldives. Please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Secretary, Ms. Mehmaz. I would like to second that proposal made by China on the Bureau members of the senior official segment of the conference. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Maldives. Would any delegations like to propose alternative nominations or second the nomination made by the distinguished delegate of China? I recognize the distinguished delegate of Philippines. Please, you have the floor.
Good morning and thank you, Madam Secretary. I agree with the proposal on the Bureau members of the senior official segment of the conference made by China and seconded by Maldives. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Philippines. Would any other delegation wish to take the floor? I see none. I would like to thank China for the proposal and Maldives and Philippines for supporting the proposal. I now declare that the following distinguished delegates will serve on the Bureau. As Chair, Mr. Jeff Montgomery, Registrar General, Births, Deaths and Marriages, Department of Internal Affairs, New Zealand. As Vice, Chair, as Vice Chairs, Mr. Syed Rashidul Hossein, Economic Counselor and Alternate Permanent Representative of Bangladesh to ESCAP. Mr. Sukmo Yuono, Minister, Deputy Chief of Mission and Deputy Permanent Representative of Indonesia to ESCAP. Ms. Suzila Binti Mohamed Sidek, Deputy Chief of Mission, Minister and Permanent Representative of Malaysia to ESCAP. Mr. Juyong Jion, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Korea to ESCAP. And Mr. Oleg Shamanov, Minister, Councillor and Deputy Permanent Representative of the Russian Federation to ESCAP. On behalf of all present, it is my privilege to congratulate the elected members of the Bureau and extend my very best wishes for success in the important work ahead. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, it is now my honour to invite Mr. Jeff Montgomery, the Chair of the Second Ministerial Conference on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and the Pacific, to take his place and conduct the meeting from this point forward. Uh, thank you. Distinguished delegates, including fellow civil registrars and my Pacific neighbours. I thank you all for the confidence placed in me to serve as your chair and the great honour you have bestowed on my country, New Zealand, and on me. Together with the vice chairs, I shall endeavour to do my very best to discharge the responsibilities of serving as your chair with the support of the ESCAP Secretariat. The members of the Bureau and I shall do our best to ensure that this second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics achieves its objectives and reaches a successful conclusion. We pledge to honour your trust by discharging our responsibilities with dedication, professional ethics and principles that guide the international civil registration and vital statistics community. Distinguished delegates, we join here today at the midpoint of the CRVS decade in Asia and the Pacific to celebrate the success of the first half of the decade and to identify the remaining challenges to ensure the shared vision that by 2024, all people in Asia and the Pacific will benefit from universal and responsive CRVS systems, facilitating the realization of their rights in supporting good governance, health and development. Although good progress has been made across the region, universal registration has yet to be achieved. And unfortunately, some people are still being left behind. Distinguished delegates, important deliberations are ahead of us. I'm mindful that as the chair of the conference, it is incumbent upon me to do my best to ensure that this session generates concrete commitments that shape the second half of the civil registration and vital statistics decade in Asia and the Pacific. For this, I rely on the cooperation and active engagement of all distinguished delegates and the able support of the members of the Bureau. Before ending, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my sincerest condolences on behalf of the entire statistics and civil registration community in Asia and the Pacific on the recent passing of Ms. Ali Muamua Malai Fono Tawa Faasalinaina, who was the National Statistician and Civil Registrar General of Samoa. Ms. Malai Fono had originally agreed to chair this conference, and while I am indeed honoured to do so, 
I only wish it were not in such sad circumstances. Mrs. Malai Fono had greatly contributed to the statistics and civil registration community throughout her extensive statistics knowledge and strong leadership. She has played a critical role, not only in the Pacific region, but was also recognized at the global level for her extensive statistical experience. She was the first and the only female statistician from the Pacific who was elected to be a member of the UN Statistical Commission in 2021. Her legacy is a significant one and a testament to her impressive talents and abilities. I'm sure the entire conference joins me in sending our deepest sympathies to Mrs. Malai Fonor's family, friends and colleagues during this period of bereavement and our condolences for this tra tragic loss. Distinguished delegates, let us now turn to, to the agenda item 1C on the adoption of the agenda as presented to you uh, in earlier documents. I now invite any comments on the agenda from the floor. I don't see any uh, comments from the floor. As there are no interventions from the floor, I would now like to introduce a brief video. However, before doing that, I would also like to note that the uh, provisional agenda as contained in the documents has been adopted. Delegates, this now concludes agenda item one. Before we continue with the other agenda items, I'd like to invite the conference room officer to play a short video on the importance of civil registration and vital statistics. <laughs> मेरे वालदा शनाती कार्ड को नहीं जिंदी वजह तो मेरी जन्म पर्ची नहीं बनी जन्म पर्ची ना होने की वजह तो ना मैं स्कूले जा सकना ना होर कोई काम कर सकना मेरी हकुमन उधर खास थे के मेरे जाए होर भी बच्चा नहीं जन्म पर्ची तैयार कर यहाँ मुझे सभी मास्टर में स्कूल वो कामी रो सब पंडन कामी ऐसे पिनासेर रूप कामी नियम मास्टर प्रिंसिपल सिगाम इन तो फाप दे हो तो रत ला नित तिन वा ला मुक कच रत ला वन गो ला दे विक खा सिन जो कोन नो नहीं होन nhưng uh, có một phần do em là trên uh, miền núi đồng bào phải đi tận tới cơ quan để làm uh, hộ tịch cho con à, do cái trình độ cũng như là cái nhận thức của bà con cái điều kiện kinh tế của bà con cũng chưa đáp ứng được cái nhu cầu mà người dân tự làm khai sinh tự khai ở nhà để được để được uh, nhận cái ưu đãi về cái khai sinh hay là khai tử tuy nhiên đối với miền núi chúng ta thì phải người dân trực tiếp đến ủy ban dân xã để làm Uh, thank you to the Secretariat. Uh, this video really highlighted the importance of this conference. Thank you. 
Distinguished delegates, given the special circumstances of this conference and to ensure the safety and well-being of all delegates during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as due to the ongoing travel restrictions in many countries in the Asia Pacific region, including my own country, I'm unable to attend this conference in person. In addition, due to the technical limitations of conducting the conference through a virtual platform, I will now call on other members of the Bureau to moderate this event. I'd like to invite my esteemed colleague, Mr. Oleg Shamanov, Vice Chair of the Senior Official Segment of the conference, to moderate agenda item two. Over to you, Mr. Oleg. Uh, good morning, distinguished colleagues. It's my honor to chair this session. And I thank you, Mr. Chair, for handing over uh, the uh, prerogatives of chairing the session to me. Um, delegates, distinguished colleagues, uh, we shall now take uh, the agenda item two, review of the progress and existing challenges in accelerating <coughs> the uh, implementation of the Regional Action Framework on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and uh, the Pacific, as presented to you in the documents, ISCAP slash MCCRVS slash 221 slash 1, on summary uh, of getting uh, everyone in the picture, a snapshot, of progress midway through the Asian Pacific Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Decade, and also document uh, ISCAP slash MCCRVS slash 221 slash 2 on support for development partners in the first half of the Asian Pacific Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Decade, which is 2015 and 2024. Uh, there are also two information documents uh, provided for this agenda item in the interest of time. I'll skip uh, reading the titles of the documents, uh, numbers for each of the uh, information documents, but they are easily available in the, uh, uh, on the web screen and uh, uh, they are shown in the annotated agenda. And uh, without any further ado, I would like to give a floor to Ms. Kamni Naidu, Administrator General, Ministry of Justice, Fiji, the chair of the regional steering group, to introduce the agenda and to provide a summary of findings uh, of uh, background papers. Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you. Distinguished delegates, it is my pleasure to present you the background of this session on the review of the progress and existing challenges in accelerating the implementation of the Regional Action Framework on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in the Persia and the Pacific. In addition to the documentation, I will present some of the findings from the midterm review of progress and will go through the purposes of this session. The principal basis for this session is the review of progress conducted by ESCAP at the midterm of the Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Decade, the main findings of which are presented in the paper, summary of getting everyone in the picture. Other relevant papers include research on the role of development partners and on the economic costs and benefits of CRVS. At the beginning of the decade, targets were established to monitor progress towards universal and responsive CRVS system. Midway through the decade, the papers show that three targets have been acted on the provision of legal documents and on the recording of causes of death occurring in hospitals. Other targets are being actioned, which are the targets on birth and death registration. 
Still, there remains areas where action is needed. The quality of the recording of causes of death remains to be improved, with many codes not being usable. Furthermore, the publication of vital statistics is in need for action with little progress since the beginning of the decade. Registering birth has been the object of much focus from countries and partners since the beginning of the decade to ensure no one is left behind. The paper shows these efforts are paying, with many countries seeing increases in their registration. Completeness. Countries that were registering fewer births at the beginning of the decade have since seen progress, reducing the gap to universal registration. This increased completeness, paired with that of death registration, has allowed countries to produce more vital statistics from civil registration records. An indicator of particular focus for countries and development partners is the percentage of children under five that have had their birth registered. This ensures births are registered early in everyone's life. In the paper, we can see an important progress has been made in the region since 2012, but around 64 million or one in five children remain unregistered. Death registration completeness is lower than birth in most countries since the benefit for families can be less obvious and the, give, and the gap between highest and the lowest completeness is more important. Still, most countries are setting increases. The recording, course, recording of cause of death, which has proven so essential in the current crisis, has also improved even, through, even though issues remain on the quality of data and on its coverage with deaths occurring at home creating a blind spot in public health monitoring. Based on the findings under Agenda Item 2, it is anticipated the conference will renew re regional commitment to the shared vision of the decade and provide guidance on how to accelerate progress towards this vision. Delegates may thus wish to focus their statements on the issues for recommendations for all, from the supporting documents, share experience and progress towards the goals and targets of the regional action framework and provide guidance on how to overcome the remaining challenges. In today's session, speakers will first go through progress made since the beginning of the decade and challenges remain across the three goals of the regional action framework, as well as the implementation steps, development partners work and the specific challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. Countries will then be invited to submit their statements related to this progress and challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Naidu, for the uh, introduction of the agenda item two. Uh, distinguished delegates, uh, it's my pleasure to invite our special guests to give us a head up on the progress toward the shared vision that uh, by 2024, everyone in Asia and the Pacific will benefit from universal and responsive uh, civil registration and vital statistics uh, systems that uh, facilitate the realization of rights and uh, support good governance, health and development. And with that, may I invite our first speaker, Mr. Philippe Satel, Vice President, Civil Registration and Vital Statistics, uh, Vital Strategies, who will speak on the support made by development partners during the first half of the decade. Sir, you have the floor now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Excellencies, ESCAP organizers, distinguished participants and guests, we welcome the report of the Secretariat describing progress made by countries towards the goals and targets of the Regional Action Framework 2015 to 2024. We especially note that more births than ever are being registered and more children now possess a birth certificate and legal identity. There has also been progress in death registration although in general, the completeness of death registration is lower than for birth registration. This midterm report comes in the midst of a global pandemic, which has thrown a spotlight on the need for more complete and timely information on deaths and their causes, so that governments can track the severity and impact of the disease. However, the midterm report does note that many country decision makers still do not have accurate and complete counts of deaths, 
or reliable information about causes of those deaths that are registered. Even for deaths that have a medically certified cause, the quality of information often needs to be improved. The midterm report also draws important attention to sub-regional variations in terms of progress toward the regional action framework goals. In countries of East and Northeast Asia and North and Central Asia, almost all births and deaths are registered and are included in vital statistics. But as mentioned, there is room for improvement with regard to the ascertainment of cause of death. By contrast, many countries in the Pacific, Southeast Asia, and South and Southwest Asia will need to accelerate progress in all areas to achieve the CRVS goals by the end of the decade. The SCAP Get Everyone in the Picture initiative aims to address these intercountry disparities by stimulating countries and development partners to direct technical and financial support to strengthening CRVS systems. Currently, 23 partners, global and regional UN development and financing agencies, regional development partners and funders, NGOs, funds and foundations are all supporting countries to implement a range of technical interventions. In addition, several sub-regional initiatives are playing important roles, such as the Brisbane Accord Group and sub-regional networks of civil registrars in the Pacific and in South Asia. Partners are providing financial and technical support to countries in line with their core mandates and expertise. For example, in East and Northeast Asia and in North and Central Asia, SCAP, Bloomberg Philanthropies Data for Health Initiative, UNFPA, UNHCR, and WHO, WHO are all supporting capacity development for the reporting of causes of death according to international standards. Elsewhere, partners are supporting the implementation steps described in the regional action framework, such as establishing or strengthening coordination mechanisms, assessments, national strategy development, costing and financing, and very importantly, the production of national vital statistics reports. Across all regions, it is recognized that strategies to strengthen CRVS systems must also address inequities in access to birth and death registration. The Center of Excellence for CRVS has focused on gender inequalities using a life course model that encompasses birth, marriage and divorce and death registration. This is a focus we believe will be maintained under the Center's new home at the UNFPA. ASCAP, UNHCR and UNICEF have drawn attention to the imperative of recording vital events among refugees, asylum seekers and stateless persons. Distinguished participants, the SCAP CRVS partnership offers an important forum for partners to coordinate their efforts and share experiences. As we move forward towards the end of the CRVS decade, all partners should undertake to continue to closely coordinate activities and support through the Get Everyone in the Picture platform, as well as regional coordination bodies and national governments to ensure a synergistic approach to country support and also to use this opportunity at the midpoint to review gaps in support in terms of intervention areas, as well as their responses to demands from countries perhaps not included in their plans. Vital Strategies is honored to be a partner in the SCAP initiative under the Data for Health initiative. As part of that effort, we support CRVS strengthening efforts in 16 countries throughout the region. Allow me just a few further reflections concerning one important and sometimes under-functioning link that between the health sector and the CRVS system. As a public health agency, we see the health sector as an important partner in government efforts to establish well-functioning civil registration systems. Many births and deaths occur in health institutions or with the close involvement of community-based health workers. The information on vital events that they continuously monitor and record can be harnessed to facilitate the official registration of all births and deaths and better inform policy and planning. In addition, developments in digital technologies offer multiple opportunities to ensure registration of all births and deaths by facilitating linkages between health and CRVS systems and enabling timely information sharing between health agencies, civil registration offices, and national statistics authorities. In conclusion, we greatly value our collaboration with partner agencies and governments in the Asia Pacific region. Together, we can aim high to ensure that everyone is counted and that reliable and timely data are available to policymakers. 
Without this information, as we know, governments lack a clear picture of population trends or causes of death, hampering their ability to take evidence-based decisions and direct resources efficiently. With it, we will be that much closer to getting everybody in the picture. Thank you kindly. Thank you, Mr. Sattel. Thank you very much for your very helpful, insightful uh, information and uh, clues uh, that might be very helpful for the discussion. We will now move to our next speaker, Mr. Mohammed uh, Shah Idal Islam, Deputy Secretary of uh, Cabinet Division, Bangladesh. Mr. Shahid Al Islam, you have the floor now. Welcome. Uh, Your Excellencies, respected chair, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. On behalf of Bangladesh, I would like to thank ESCAP and other co organizing partners for arranging the second ministerial conference on CRDS in the Asia and Pacific, despite of the challenges of the COVID 19 situation. Bangladesh is now marching towards its planned path to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Along with the vision of the upper middle income country by 2031 and the high income country by 2041. One of the tools Bangladesh is using for its development efforts is civil registration and vital statistics. Since the first ministerial conference in 2014, Bangladesh has been working relentlessly to achieve the shared vision, goals and targets of the regional action framework. We have remarkable progress in some targets of goal one and goal two, while the rest of the targets are still in progress. Target 1A, the progress in this target was around 22% in the years 2018 and 2019. In 2020, it was declined by two percentage points and then bounced back to around 22% in the third quarterly report of the 2021. Target 1B, the birth registration rate of children under five days stood at 20% in 2014, which has experienced a sharp rise to 71.2% in 2019. During the COVID-19 fallout in 2020, it stood at 56% by declining 15 percentage points. And target 1D, in case of death registration, it is increasing consistently from 20% in 2017 to 29% in 2019 and 35% in 2020. The third quarterly report also shows that it is around 40%. However, in the regional election framework, we fixed our target at 50% of death registration by 2024. Target 1E, in 2017, Bangladesh first time introduced the medical certification of cause of death and barber autopsy with the technical support from vital strategies. After the inception, in 2018, 19.6% of death have MCCOD recorded by the health sectors. It was 49% and around 57% respectively in 2019 and in 2020. Target 2A and 2D, legal identity, to uphold the citizen's rights and entitlement of identity, all individuals are provided with birth and death certificates immediately after the registration is completed. Moreover, birth and death certificates included all information which are mentioned in target 2a and 2d of the goal 2. In the meantime, Bangladesh has already been able to complete most of the implementation steps of regional action framework. In 2010, in compliance with the encouraging directives of Honorable Prime Minister, Bangladesh started to initialize the CRBS system. After that, Bangladesh undertook a comprehensive assessment of its CRBS system between 2012 and 2013 to, identity, to identify strengths and weakness in the system. Subsequently, a strategic action plan for improving CRBS also developed. Consecutively, in 2014, Bangladesh took a whole of government approach, engaging all the relevant ministries and agencies and formed a national CRBS coordination mechanism. This CRBS coordination mechanism through a CRBS chairing committee. This steering committee is headed by the cabinet secretary of the government, while 19 secretaries of the different ministries are its member. In addition, under the leadership of the cabinet division, Bangladesh formulated the CRBS implementation committee, legal review committee, and technical committee as part of the national CRBS coordination mechanism. In case of monitoring and reporting plan, 
the CRBS implementation committee under the supervision of the CRBS steering committee is regularly monitoring the regional action framework targets as well as reporting to the ESCA. Last year in 2020, Bangladesh government introduced a prescribed annual performance agreement tool to monitor the birth and death registration completeness rate at sub-district and district levels. Moreover, the Office of the Register General introduced real-time monitoring to track progress on birth and death registration using the BDRIS system. Using this system, ORG is publishing quarterly summary tabulations based on birth and death registration records. On the other hand, Director General of Health Services, Law and Justice Division, and other relevant ministries monitor the progress of the different components of the civil registration separately and report to the Cabinet Division. In April 2019, CRBS Steering Committee developed a policy paper in the form of guidelines defining the scope of the CRBS along with the stakeholders' roles and management framework. This paper also guided the stakeholders regarding the data flow, data security, and privacy along with the implementation plan. Bangladesh has yet to develop a full-fledged multi-sectoral national CRBS strategy. Last year, in 2020, Bangladesh government took a decision to conduct an inequality assessment on CRBS in order to facilitate implementation steps of regional action framework and SDGs as in the leaving no one behind. ESCAP extended its hand to conduct the inequality assessment through the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Uh, I would like to co conclude my presentation by saying that all of government leadership and the Relative C related CRBS agencies can contribute to establish an integrated CRBS system through which Bangladesh will be able to achieve the targets of regional action framework by 2024. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for passion sharing. Thank you very much. I thank you, Mr. Shah Al Islam. Uh, next on our list is uh, our chair, Mr. Jeff Montgomery. Registered General, Births, Deaths, and Marriages. I have to say that I would prefer two entries here, just births and marriages, preferably no deaths, to the extent possible. And uh, uh, he's from Department of International Affairs, New Zealand, and please, the floor is yours. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Kia ora, good evening. Talofa lava, malo elele, kia ora ana. Bula Banaka, and warmest Pacific greetings to you all. I'm speaking to you this evening from New Zealand at the very bottom of our region, and you can see behind me our parliament buildings and the sun, which is about to set. It gives me great pleasure to share with you how New Zealand ensures that all individuals are provided with legal documentation of births, deaths, and other vital events so that they can, they can claim identity civil status and access to services. New Zealand is continuously improving our civil registration system to better facilitate the registration of births and deaths. We have very high levels of registration with almost all of our approximately 60,000 births and 30,000 deaths registered within two months of the event occurring. Our focus over recent years has been making the process easier for people. And part of this is ensuring that our services support the entire life event needs of the citizen, not just what we as a government agency need. More than 95% of all births in New Zealand are registered online. Parents can also order a birth certificate using a completely online process. However, this is only part of the story. We have developed, in partnership with other government agencies, an online tool which parents start using as soon as they find out they are pregnant. This is called Smart Start. You can find it easily online by searching. Smart Start provides in one place, all the information that parents need. They can also use Smart Start to register their baby, give the baby a name, apply for a tax number for the baby, and apply for financial support from the government. 
very soon they will also be able to use Smart Start to make appointments for vaccinations and to enrol their child in education. The tool is designed to be used on a mobile device. There is no cost and anyone, even you, can access it online. We have taken a similar but different approach with death registration. Most deaths in New Zealand are registered by funeral directors. Until recently, this was largely a paper process with medical practitioners filling in paper forms on the medical cause of death and then passing the paper on to the funeral director who then completed a death registration process. We now have an online tool called Death Docs or Death Documents. This was developed by our Civil Registration Office in conjunction with our colleagues at the Ministry of Health. Now most doctors complete the medical certificate cause of death entirely online. This flows electronically through to the funeral director and ultimately to death registration and statistical reporting. During the early days of the COVID pandemic, we were able to use this early notification of death to forecast potential overloading of hospitals and overloading of other body storage facilities. The online process was of course also safer for everybody to use. Birth and death registration in New Zealand is free. However, most of our operation, most of my costs of running my organization is financed through the sale of certificates or the sale of data. Increasingly, parents, for example, can share information about their children digitally rather than purchasing a birth certificate. We enable them to securely share their information directly from the registry to other government agencies. We also have daily data sharing arrangements in place with social services, taxation, education, health, voting, and statistics departments across government. These departments pay for the data they receive. We also have in place commercial arrangements with businesses such as banks and insurance companies to share death information with them so that they can update their customer records. Private businesses are willing to pay a lot for this data as it reduces their costs of communicating with customers and the cost of storing information about people who have died. As chair of the Pacific Civil Registrars Network, I would also like to acknowledge the importance of regional collaboration. The Pacific is a very special place. We have lots of small countries, often separated by thousands of kilometers of water. So it can be very lonely being the only civil registrar on an island. Our network connects us with each other, allowing us to share best practice and information. Many of our people move between different countries. We're continuing to put in place data sharing arrangements between countries in the Pacific, and we are working with global partners to develop shared civil registration IT platforms to make this sharing easier. Kia ora koutou katoa, nā mihi nui, good health to us all, and thank you. Many thanks uh, to you, Mr. Montgomery. And uh, we now have another speaker on the list, Mr. Gagita Todoradze, Executive Director of the National Statistics Office, Georgia, and Chair of UNSCAP Committee on Statistics. Mr. Todoradze, Prashuvas, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished delegates, ladies, and gentlemen, on behalf of the National Statistics Office of Georgia, I'm honored to thank UNSCAF and other co-organizing partners for uh, scheduling the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. 
I would like to express our appreciation to the UNESCO for undertaking this very important task of making easy our deliberations, such as regional study group meeting and regional forum of civil society organizations on CRS. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to highlight the landmark ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific held in 2014. Uh, this historic event took place at an opportune time when the entire international community was deliberating at the Emerging Global Development 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Lack of well-functioning systems hampered inclusive and sustainable development. The governments and uh, development partners uh, around Asia and the Pacific recognized that many countries didn't have universal and responsive CRE systems. Since 2014, governments have been adapting the regional action framework on CRE's into their uh, comprehensive and multi-sectoral national CRE strategies and as a consequence, more member states have more accurate, complete, and timely vital statistics to deliver public services. In terms of CREs in Georgia, the production and publication of vital statistics is largely dependent on the completeness of civil registration. Georgia has highly developed online registration system. It should be noted that in Georgia, since 2011, the medical certificates are filing electronically. Therefore, one of the geostrategic priorities is to produce demographic statistics in line with uh, international standards and requirements. Also, I would like to mention that strategy of national statistical system of Georgia highlights activities which are related to the improvement of the quality of courses uh, of test indicators. Uh, if we are going to focus on progress in taking the implementation steps uh, contained in the regional action framework, we are pleased to know that three goals of ministerial declaration are mainly achieved in our country and we are working hard to improve the quality issues, especially for uh, the causes of the statistics. This means that highlighting uh, positive examples is very important to ensure all targets are reached by the end of 2024. I am pleased to emphasize that Georgia uh, represents such example having improved their systems in the past few years. In Georgia, a series of reforms made between 2003 and 2017 uh, reshaped the CRE system as a whole uh, to make it more efficient. These changes mostly consisted in removing barriers to registration and facilitating the transfer of information between administrations, especially between the uh, Public Service Development Agency in charge of civil registration in Georgia, NCDC, and Geostat. As for coupled with initiatives to ensure better data quality, such as the use of uh, personal identification numbers to avoid uh, duplicates and the uh, verification of ICD codes with the uh, Anaconda software. As a result of this progress, first, a uh, vital statistics report was published in 2017. In addition, the publication of uh, vital statistics report is included in a statistical working program and is uh, disseminated once in a year. Uh, the current pandemic is uh, disrupting CRE system all over the world, but well-functioning systems are more essential than ever. It is worth to mention that despite the re registration of vital events is being disrupted, 
by lockdowns and social distancing measures, Geostat is publishing all data on time without any delay. Mr. Chairman, based on the key challenges uh, faced as the initial implementation, the regional state group provides recommendations uh, to advance the region's progress towards achieving the goals of the ministerial declaration. Uh, we look forward to working with our associates at ESCA, WHO, and other development partners to ensure that these priorities find reflection in advancing towards the achieving the universal and responsive CRV systems in the country by 2024. In conclusion, allow me to reiterate that our vision is one of the common future that will ensure the improvement of the quality of life, social justice, peace and uh, security resulting in well-being uh, for the people from our region. As we move forward in um, implementation of the regional action framework for CREs uh, in Asia and the Pacific, I, I believe that together we can turn many challenges into opportunities to build universal and comprehensive CRE system. On our part, Georgia remains committed to this process and we assure you of our continued support in realizing this common goal and strategic vision. Thank you very much. I thank you, Mr. Todorazzo. Uh, thank you very much for your very detailed uh, presentation. Uh, and I also would like to thank you for your proactive role as uh, the chair of the ESCAP Committee on Statistics. Uh, now we have kind of a reshuffle on the list of the speakers. And uh, it's my pleasure now to give the floor uh, to the next speaker on the list, uh, who would be Mr. Mohammad Shalifi Hani, Director of Population Planning and Social Protection, Ministry of National Development Planning, Indonesia. Uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, functioning ship registration and vital statistic system can provide significant population data. It is essential for development planning and the implementation. In line with GRPS, Indonesia issued law number 12, year 26 on citizenship, and also law number 23, year 2006 on population administration, as a start to provide integrated population data system. Realizing the importance of GRPS, the government of Indonesia is committed to strengthening the GRPS mechanism as targeted in midterm national development planning or RPGMN 2020 to 2024, 100 population should have legal identity document in 2024. In order to streamline the implementation and commitment of the government of Indonesia, the President of Indonesia legitimized president, presidential degree number 62, year 2019, concerning the national strategy to accelerating population administration to the development of vital statistics, or stand for AKPSA national strategy, or GRPS national strategy. The purpose of this regulation is to accelerate the implementation of population and civil registration, make it more universal, inclusive, and continuously to provide legal identity for all Indonesia and to provide accurate, complete, and timely vital statistics. In order to support and control the implementation of AKPHA national strategy, Presidential Decree number 62, year 2019, also mandates forming a national focal point, AKPSA team, and the, the Secretariat of the national team. The national focal point, AKPSA team, is directed to coordinate, monitor, evaluate, and report 
the implementation progress. The focal point member are the relevant ministries or institution with assigned based on their relevance in five national strategy. There are the number one is expanding the range of population registration and civil registration service for all Indonesia resident and citizen abroad. And secondly, increasing awareness and activeness of all Indonesian resident and citizen abroad in registering population event and other important event. And number three is accelerating of the ownership of residential document for vulnerable group of population administration and special group. And then number four is development and improvement of the vital statistic capability that's accurate, complete, and time for development planning and implementation. And the lastly is strengthening coordination, collaboration, and synchronization between ministries, institution, local government, and stakeholder in population registration and civil registration services, and also the development of vital statistics. The national point, focal point AKPSA team is led by Minister of National Development Planning of, or Head of Bapenas as the Chief Executive, and then Minister of Home Affairs as the Deputy Chief Executive. The national team consists of 17 ministries or institutions, including Ministry of Health, Ministries of Finance, the Supreme Court, etc. The AKPSA national strategy has nine national targets related to ownership of legal identity document, such as population ID number or NIK, but certificate, marriage book and marriage certificate, divorce certificate, death certificate, and cause of death based on international code ICD-10. The target are expected to increase every year, and we hope the relevant ministries or institution can jointly support to achieving the target of 100 population administration document ownership for our residents in Indonesia by 2024. Thank you. I thank Mr. Shalifihani, and uh, we are now moving uh, ahead, and uh, we have an next speaker on our list, Ms. Nazari Baharuddin. Baharuddin. Deputy Chief Statistician, Department of Statistics, Malaysia. And uh, may I kindly request the uh, conference room officer to play the video. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon, honorable delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to present the impact of COVID-19 on Malaysia's CRVS system and how these challenges were addressed to prepare for future health crisis. CRVS system play an important role directly and indirectly in monitoring and achieving SDG goals, targets, and indicators. The fundamental principles behind CRVS are in line with the SDGs, including the objective to support good governance and to promote inclusion in the country. There are five main components in CRVS, mainly birth, death, marriage, divorce, and causes of death. Civil registration generates birth and death data that can be combined with information on migration to provide government with up-to-date statistics on population size, growth, and distribution. Government can use this data to devise and implement efficient, targeted, and evidence-based decision-making in administration. As for Malaysia's involvement in CRVS, Malaysia has also adopted the resolutions proposed in the ministerial conference in a ministerial declaration to get everyone in the picture and regional action framework for the decade. CRVS stakeholders in Malaysia include Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Health, National Registration Department, and the Department of Statistics Malaysia. In Malaysia, National Registration Department is responsible for the registration of vital event that is birth, death, marriage, and divorce. Department of Statistics Malaysia is responsible to process and disseminate vital registration statistics. 
since the enactment of the Ordinance on Registration of Birth and Death in 1869 in the Straits Settlement, various legal structures have been put in place to enable structured and systematic civil registration to this day. Currently, Malaysia has 20 legal instruments to legislate and facilitate CRVS in Malaysia, and we are in the midst of amending some of these laws to address changes and challenges that we face as a result of globalization and mobilization. Malaysia has made important progress in the production of vital statistics in the country over the last few years. The Department of Statistics Malaysia and the National Registration Department have long-standing relationship and are continuously improving their collaboration to facilitate the sharing of birth and death registration records for the produ production of vital statistics. As a result, the data exchange protocols between the two agencies evolved from hard copy document to soft copy. Since 2016, the exchange was done via online transfers and on a monthly basis. This has allowed Dawson to produce quarterly statistics on birth and death and to shorten the time frame in producing annual vital statistics from 24 months to less than 12 months. However, this infrastructure was put to test with the COVID-19 pandemic. The integrated NRV system offering registration of birth and death online at, at its offices and kiosks were brought to a halt when the movement control order was implemented to prevent the spread of the virus. NRV offered an extension of up to 90 days for registration of birth and death after the MCO was lifted. Essential services as situated in the Federal Constitution of Malaysia does not include birth and death registration. Registration offices were closed from mid-March to mid-May 2020 and later only available by appointment. This meant the birth and death registration accessible by Dawson represented only a fraction of the expected birth and death. The Ministry of Health registers and keeps records of birth with, within and outside its facilities, as well as death within its facilities. Meanwhile, the Royal Malaysian Police registers and keeps records of death outside health facilities. The records are transmitted online to NRV for issuance of birth and death certificates. Both agencies were still operating during the time of MPO. However, Dawson has access to the consolidated and verified records at NRV, but not raw records at M. Hulfish and the Royal Malaysian Police. Dawson continued to produce its vital statistic report for the first quarter of the year. In the absence of complete data, Dawson has to resort to estimation. Time series method is used based on data from the past 10 years, as well as estimation methods more specific to the situation. For example, taking into account the drop in the number of road accidents and the late registrations of birth and death due to restricted movements during the movement control order imposed by the government. To address this challenge, the department was able to use past experiences especially the adjustments performed on death data in the province of Sabah to com compensate for under-registration. The pandemic that brought an unexpected challenge to civil registration processes in many countries highlighted the need for resilient system, especially considering the importance of having accurate and real-time data for vital statistics and more importantly, to have undisrupted birth and death registration. The prompt action from Dawson is a proof that human resources is a key element to a performance CRVS system with the application of complex demographic models to ensure the continuity of service. However, there is a need to further strengthen the collaboration with the stakeholders and the potential to have access to their data in such a time of emergency. CRVS stakeholders in Malaysia have learned the importance to heighten CRVS data sharing and thus, data sharing agreement was formalized between MOH and Dawson. This will certainly lead to a more resilient vital statistics system. Thank you. Our thanks to Ms. Nazaria Baharuddin. And uh, the last guest speaker today on our list is Dr. Rajesh Daksit. 
Director, Center for Cancer Epidemiology of the Tata Memorial Center in India, and uh, Dr. Dixit Apko Swagatam, Ham Apko Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, very good morning, uh, uh, and thank you very much, uh, the Chair. So, uh, uh, so the Registration of Birth and Death Act 1969, Section 10 of the Act empowers the state government to enforce the provision relating to the medical certification of cause of death in specific areas, taking into the consideration the availability of medical facilities. Section 10.3 of the Act provides for issuing a certificate of the cause of death by the medical practitioners who has attended to the deceased at the time of the death. Under the RBD Act 1969, the Office of the Registrar General of India obtains data on medically certified deaths, has collected, compiled them, and tabulate by the Office of the Chief Registrars of Birth and Deaths of the States and Union Territories. The main challenges to improving the coverage and quality of the medical certification of cause of death in India are as follows. So number one is the lack of inability, enabling environment. For example, at present, the civil registration system is in silo and there is a lack of intersectorial collaboration with health, civil registration and other stakeholders. There is a need to form a multi-sectorial committee that comprise of representatives from ministers such as health, statistics, human resources, education, etc. Now, another challenge is there is a delay in the data reporting. So it is observed that in some of the statistics of annual MCCD report of 2019, few states are listed under category that data are not available. In India, the CRVS system is decentralized and data travels from local to district to state to national level as per protocol. However, due to delays in reporting events and validations of the data, it may happen that respective state data is delayed in forwarding to the next level. This makes data unavailable for the further analysis. Another challenge is support of the legal and regulatory framework for the data registration. At present, the Registrations of Birth and Death Act 1969 governs the laws regarding framework of birth and death registration in India. Although it covers key civil registration component, our society, CRVS standards, IT capacity, privacy requirement, and CRV system have evolved, and the legal framework would benefit from a revision to meet current system capacities and needs. The another challenge which needs to be addressed is the quality and the data monitoring of the death which has been reported. Due to lack of training of medical doctors in MCCD certification, erroneous and poor quality data is obtained, which greatly impacts the quality of cause of death for decision making and planning. Although we have achieved success through the inclusion of MCCD competencies in MBBS training, MCCD training is also required for practicing doctors, which greatly impacts their understanding of why the certified deaths and how to certify the deaths correctly. So to, to meet these challenges and to address these challenges, the practical steps which can be taken are as follows. The first steps which needs to be taken is to establish a MCCOD technical committee for improving the coverage and quality of MCCOD. So a national coordinating committee can be prioritized in the country efforts to improve coverage and quality of medical certification of causes of death. A committee which comprises of representatives from other ministries such as health, medical education, medical councils, etc., can work together in coordination for formulating strategies for improving coverage and quality of certification of the death. The another uh, steps which can be easily taken is collaboration with, with the health sector to channelize the MCCD data verification. And the third thing is to remove the barriers of MCD to the MCCD certification. Some of the barriers which are there uh, for the MCCD certification are lack of training on MCCD certification, 
difficult to certify the case, no guidance on difficult, uh, no, no guidance on MCCD forms, no feedback shared with doctors to improve upon the certification mistakes, lack of importance of MCCD certification among doctors. The solution is the training of all doctors, allopathic and those providing natural medicine. Our unit uh, and Tata Memorial Center has developed and four hours e-learning course with excellent case example, but this training is only effective if doctor complete the course. And their superiors requires that this course is completed and the quality of the causes of their certification should be regularly scrutinized. Then there is a need to facilitate MCCD certification of deaths due to the external causes. Deaths due to external causes often delay the registration process due to the criminal involvement or to ascertain the causes of death. Then there is a need for the institutionalizing the data quality review mechanism at the mi micro level. Each institution certifying MCCD should have review committee, which can perform assessment of MCCD certificates before sending the data to the next level for the processing. This will help in picking up the mistakes in MCCD certificates at very early stage and provide scope for improving the data quality. The another important challenge is how to determine the cause of death for out of facility, uh, cause, of, cause of death for out of facility deaths. So the verbal autopsy is the essential service required for cause of death out of health facilities and in absence of medical experts. The VA system for out of facility deaths should be linked to the CR, CRVS system. Sufficient VA interviewers and supervisors should be identified and there should be a system to monitor progress and provide quality assurance of VA implementation. There should be regular quality audits for checking VA data. Harshening information technology is another area which, which can help us to meet many challenges. So use of electronic devices to expedite the data collections, data processing and data transfer from different units of decentralized CRVS system. The production of timely, highly quality mortality statistics is required to be made uh, to, uh, to avoid all these challenges. Then there is a need to integrate this reporting of medical certificate of cause of bad death with overall CRVS systems in, in, in India. We propose few steps to better MCCD reporting within the overall CRS system in India as follows. Number one is intra-sector collaboration across key stakeholders. This will help in improving the quality of cause of death. Coordination between health system and civil registration is required since many individuals are either admitted or have recently discharged from health facilities at the time of their death. Making efforts for increasing awareness about benefits of a medical certificate of cause of death for each death is an important uh, milestone. Improving awareness of doctors toward the importance of MCCD reporting. Training of medical students and practicing doctors on MCCD by making MCCD course as a part of the medical curriculum. Focus on doctors from rural areas and train them for correct MCCD reporting. Promoting MCCD e-learning course among Indian doctors. Efficient use of verbal autopsy techniques for deaths outside health facilities. Timely dissemination of mortality data by states and making it mandate for RGI. Revising the legal framework to meet current system, privacy, CRVS standards, and IT infrastructure needs. There's a great amount of work to support cause of death quality improvement, but it can be achieved with strategic planning and multi-sectorial collaboration to ensure that we get everyone in the picture. Thank you very much. Shri Rajesh Jixit, aapki bayan ke liye aapko bahut bahut shukriya. Thank you very much for your very nice statement. And uh, we are now approaching the end of the list of the speakers uh, from the category of the guest speakers. And uh, before we move to the country deliberations, I would like to reiterate the ground rules for uh, our discussions of this agenda item. We are discussing now, <clears throat> as well as uh, all other agenda items over the four days 
uh, we would like to ask uh, for your support to tailor your interventions mainly to issues uh, for discussion or action only uh, and to keep uh, your interventions to no more than three minutes. Uh, I urge delegations to keep interventions brief and focused and the time is being displayed on the screen to assist you. Uh, you will also be alerted if and when uh, your three minutes are up and you will be asked to wrap up your intervention. Uh, given the technical limitations of conducting the conference uh, through the uh, virtual platform and in view of the mandate and operational requirements of the international meeting, intergovernmental meeting, priority will be given to members, associate members and uh, permanent observers uh, of the commission to liberate on procedural matters and uh, limited opportunities to liberate on procedural matters will be available uh, for observer organizations, intergovernmental organizations and other entities depending on availability of time. And I thank you for your attention. Uh, to maintain order uh, and uh, for delegations to be ready to take the floor, when I call on the speaker, I will also announce uh, the uh, delegation next online. As of now, we have uh, requests uh, from four delegations, Iran, Nepal, China, and India. And uh, I now invite uh, the comments on the agenda item two from the floor. As I announced, the first speaker on the list uh, is uh, Iran, Mr. Mohammad Baher Abbasi. His, nas uh, his national focal point for CRV's decade. I welcome you, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Do you hear me? Yes, we do hear you very nicely. Uh, in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, I doubt that I would like to extend my huge appreciation to Mr. Chair and thank the Secretary for its great leadership of the meeting. Mr. Chair, we all know providing identity and civil registration and vital statistics are crucial for individuals as well as for the society at large. As a matter of fact, CRVS should be considered as one of the components of the right to development in general and development of legal identity in particular. In Sustainable Development Goals Agenda, we emphasize and pledge to leave no country and no one behind. Furthermore, we also reaffirm the need to work towards an international development cooperation system that recognizes the multidimensional character of development. Islamic Republic of Iran highlights the multilateral collaboration for expanding the CRVS system and underscores the importance of further strengthening cooperation and initiatives, especially in the current international economic environment, respecting the different national realities, policies, priorities, and levels of development. Mr. Chair, Given the importance of civil registration and vital statistics, we emphasize that the provision of financial resources and an essential infrastructure due to the imposition of unilateral coercive measures has a direct effect on mobilization of the required resources for achieving the development goals of the targeted states. Most prominent among those goals are national civil registration and vital statistics. In fact, the right to development and unilateral coercive measures are mutually exclusive. As such, a, to enhance the development of CRVS, we reiterate the need for developed countries to fulfill their commitments regarding official development assistance to developing countries. Islamic Republic of Iran stresses that investment in infrastructure plays a key role in reducing the cost of development for CRVS. My delegation is honored to pledge our readiness to work with the SCAP to encourage effective partnership to enhance synergies on our joint efforts 
and common ground for the realization of the CRBS goal. Mr. Chair and distinguished delegation, regarding all viewpoints mentioned, I would like to conclude that the renewed commitment to multilateralism and global solidarity is urgently needed. The Islamic Republic of Iran calls upon all members to promote development-oriented policies that support sustainability as well as justice through unwavering dedication to promoting multilateral decision-making. I thank you so much, Mr. Che. I thank you, Iran. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed Bahar Abbasi, for your statement. The next speaker on the list, the list is changing. Okay. So the next speaker on the, on the list is India, contrary to what I announced earlier, but this is an evolving process. Uh, I will give the floor now to Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, Deputy Deputy Director General and a member of Indian delegation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Excellencies and distinguished delegates. Uh, civil registration system is popularly known as birth and death registration system in India. It provides individuals with official recognition and documentation necessary to establish legal identity and civil status. The information collected through CR's civil registration system provides useful and important statistics. Registration of births and deaths in India is mandatory with the enactment of Registration of Births and Deaths Act 1969. India is a vast country consisting of 28 states and eight union territories. As per the registration data from CRS for the year 2019, the level of registration at national level is 92.7% for birth and 92% for death. 14 states have achieved 10% registration level for births. In case of deaths, 19 states have achieved 10% registration level. The trend line indicates that the level of registration of births that was 86.6% in 2014, has risen to 92.7% in 2019. In case of death registration, the progress has been from 72.5% to 92% for the same period. India is committed to achieve 100% registration target by 2024. In order to achieve this vision, the country has reduced the, proce the process time of civil registration and the physical interface of different stakeholders by use of digital platform. More than three-fourths of the registration units in the country are working in digital mode. States and medical institutions have been motivated to use the uniform software to bring in a standardization in documentation, data archiving, and issuance of certificate through rigorous follow-up and consultation at all levels. However, with the aim of further streamlining the registration process, the present CRS portal is being revamped. In addition, the process of amending the RBD Act 1969 has been initiated in order to accommodate the progressive changes in the society in the last 50 years since the enactment of the Act. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank you, Mr. Kumar. And uh, we will now get back to the uh, speaker uh, from Nepal, who was skipped due to the unstable uh, internet connections. I hope he's got connected again. And uh, if it is the case, uh, it is my pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Tirtharaj Bhattarai, Director General, Nepal. Are you with us, Mr. Bhattarai? Seems it is not the case. So then, to save time, we will proceed uh, with the uh, another speaker on the list from the uh, country statement category, which is Mr. Shen Ruyang, China, Deputy Director General. Say it again. 
Uh, I thank you, Secretariat. Uh, they have advised me that actually China requested the time slot after the uh, uh, lunch break. So um, I apologize uh, for uh, announcing the statement from China. Uh, that will be our speaker uh, first on the list from the country state statement uh, after the lunchtime. May I now double check and make sure that Nepal is still not with us? which is uh, unfortunately the case. Uh, this is the limitation of uh, the uh, meetings being conducted uh, in the virtual format, but it is inevitable. And uh, with that, we are done now with the list of speakers uh, for the morning session from the category of country statements. Uh, distinguished delegates, thank you for your interventions and participation in this uh, morning session. And uh, that brings our morning session to conclusion. And uh, with that, I have uh, to announce that we will shall resume the agenda item two at 2 p.m. Bangkok time. Before uh, we adjourn the meeting, I give the floor to the Secretariat uh, for any administrative announcements, if any. Thank you very much. Um, distinguished delegates, uh, the Secretariat would like to thank you for your active participation this morning. We would like to remind you all to rejoin the afternoon session using the same KUDO link. We will continue agenda item two at 2 p.m. During the break, we would like to invite you to join a side event on deep dive on progress made during the, half, the first half of the decade. The session will be moderated by Ms. Rachel Bevan, Director, Statistics Division, ESCAP, and there will be three panelists from Armenia, Maldives, and Vanuatu joining the discussion. Interested participants are requested to join us through the Microsoft Teams. Information about this event is being shown on the slide. Thank you again, and see you this, and see you this afternoon.
Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, welcome back to the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. And uh, we're going to be continuing with the agenda item two, which is a review of the progress and existing challenges in accelerating the implementation of the original action framework on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific. And I'm uh, very glad to see a very good and clear picture from Nepal, which means that that connection is good. And uh, without any further ado, may I kindly invite distinguished uh, Director General, Mr. Tirtharaj Bhattarai from Nepal to speak. The floor is yours, sir. Welcome. Okay, good afternoon, sir. And I thank you for uh, giving me our time. Uh, honorable Chair, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to address the second ministerial conference on civil registration and vital statistics on behalf of Nepali delegates, as well as my own behalf, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the United Nation, Nations Economics and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific for creating such a platform to build our common future. Nepal has endorsed the first ministerial declaration on CRVS, proclaimed the Asia and the Pacific CRVS decades 2015-2024, and marked our time frame for realizing the shared vision that all people of Nepal will benefit from a stabilized and responsive CRVS system. We also have adopted the ministerial declaration to get everyone in the picture in Asia and the Pacific and committed to discuss, focusing our efforts towards improving national CRVS system by endorsing the regional action framework on CRVS in Asia and the Pacific. Honorable Chair, Nepal being one of the member states has been working to meet the agenda declared at the first minister conference as we were committed to ensure the universal access to civil registration. 77.2% 70, of the children under five years have got their birth registration online so far. Almost 83% local registrar offices are currently registering vital events through web portal. The vital, the vital events registered through traditional method are being digitized and scanned. To increase the coverage, registration camps are being organized at local level registration office. Birth notification system has been developed to notify local register about the birth of a child after successful registration in online portal used at the birthing centers. Every citizen of Nepal will get national ID with biometric information by the end of 2022. And the NID system will be integrated to civil registration system that will ensure real-time data. Additionally, we will begin a process to implement medical certification of cause of death, MCCD, shortly. We believe that timely register of vital events to every citizen will help in formulating evidence-based policy and its effective implementation. Finally, I am sure that this conference will assist member states to achieve the aspiration of 2030 agenda. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Patarai. And uh, we also have the representative of China on the speaker's list under the agenda item two, Mr. Shenrui Yang, Deputy Director General, Department of Population, Surveillance and uh, Family Development, National Health Commission, China. Uh, I kindly welcome you and uh, the floor is yours. Uh 
实现了出生登记的全覆盖，死因登记的覆盖率啊超过了百分之七十。四是呢，每十年开展全国人口普查，每五年开展百分之一的人口抽样调查，其他年份呢要开展千分之一的抽样调查。那么，中国在二零二零年呢，顺利完成了第七次的全国人口普查。呃，卫生健康呃等相关政府部门啊，开展各类的常规的监测调查，也获得了呃大量的人口变动的基础数据。五是呢，建成了以公民身份号码为唯一标识、多部门共建共享的国家人口基础信息库，啊，覆盖了全国十四亿的人口。第二个方面呢，是这个呃落实行动措施，提高登记的覆盖率和数据的质量。啊，一是呢这个加强宣传，扩大公民的参与。比如说呢，我们国家在开展人口普查的时候，有一句宣传标语啊，当时是全国人民都知道，就叫“大国点名，没你不行”。啊，这个来促进了这个普查的这个登记率。还有一些地方的政府部门呢，通过优化服务，啊，比如说我们在一些地方推行出生一件事。就小孩一出生，他所有的证件呢一次性办完，啊，通过这些方式呢来方便群众啊，提高登记的及时率，啊，第二个呢是充分利用信息化的手段，我们已经普遍的实现了民事登记的电子化，也开展了跨部门的信息的共享和校核，啊，信息的质量大幅提升，啊，中国在抗击新冠肺炎疫情的过程中，信息化的广泛应用发挥了重要的作用。三呢，是从这个建立从国家到乡镇的登记管理体系，配备工作人员，保障经费，加强培训，有效的落实登记工作。第三个方面呢，是这个积极推进啊，信息的传播。呃，国家统计局和相关部门每年汇编数据啊，通过新闻呃发布会、公报、统计年鉴和数据集等方式啊，向社会发布。同时呢，还联合高校建立呃人口数据的微观实验室啊。那么进一步来扩大数据向社会的开放共享。下一步呢，中国政府呢将呃继续呃积极落实呃亚太民事统计与人口动态统计的行动框架。我们愿与地区各国啊、呃、共同努力，在尊重差异的基础上，深化国际合作，促使照顾到所有人这样的一个共同愿景的早日实现。谢谢。Thank you, Mr. Young.、Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is、uh, the、uh, last speaker for this afternoon session on the agenda item two.、Uh, that said, I would like to ask if there is any other delegation that、uh, would wish to take the floor. Goes once, goes twice, goes thrice.、Uh, seems it is not the case.、Uh, I do not see any delegation that might indicate、uh, the、uh, wish to speak on the agenda item two. So, then. Uh, if there is any other delegation、uh, that may, may be wishing to raise any other matters, it is time now to indicate the wish to speak. If there is any such a delegation, I see no indication. So none, and、uh, that would mean that we are all, that we are done with the consideration of the agenda item two. And I only have to thank you all for your participation in the discussions. Let's call it a day, and、uh, it is time to adjourn、uh, and reconvene tomorrow. Uh, before、uh, gobbling the adjournment of the meeting, I would like to hand over to the secretariat for any administrative announcements. Please, secretariat, the floor is yours. Thank you very much,、um, distinguished delegates.
the Secretariat would like to thank you for your active participation today. Uh, we would like to remind you that the session will start tomorrow, Wednesday, 17th of November at 10 a.m. Bangkok time and will adjourn at 4 p.m. Bangkok time. We will take up tomorrow agenda items three and four. Kindly note the link to access the meeting through Kudo tomorrow will be the same as for today. However, the link for YouTube tomorrow will change and is available in the program. Delegates who join via Kudo are welcome to join 30 minutes before the session starts for testing their connection. For your information, a warm-up session introducing agenda item three on the role of the health sector in civil registration and vital statistics systems will take place tomorrow morning at 8.45 Bangkok time before the formal session of the conference. Interested participants are requested to join through Microsoft Teams. The link to join the event was already sent to the registered participant. Information about the event is currently being shown on the slide. Have a good afternoon and evening, and we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Another.